making speed the, uh, the only priority in training. Um, I'm a, uh, an absolute, I call myself an essentialist. Um, if you have not read the book Essentialism, uh, you need to. It's, uh, everybody needs to de declutter with their possessions, declutter their brains. Uh, you need to uh, uh, decide what things you want to go big on. I love this slide because this is what I try to do. By trying to go in one direction and going big on certain things, I think, I think things work out pretty good. Too many people are going big in opposite directions, which leads you to not very good results. I think this is the typical coach. And I think that a lot of clinics you go to, this is how you leave the clinic. Where you are going in all directions and you're trying to go big on everything. Wisdom of life, elimination of the non-essentials. Now this could be in your home life, your, your teaching, your coaching, all that stuff. It's very important to understand where you want to go big. This is a quote from the book. We're not trying to get more things done, it's getting the right things done. And of course, the right thing, in my opinion, is velocity, how fast you can go. I think the carryover to speed in every other thing. I remember uh, my football coach one time said, hey, why do you keep going, you know, like linear speed? Football is this way and that way and that way. And so I asked Corfus. He goes, well, tell your football coach, the guy that goes the fastest that way is the same guy that can go fast this way and this way and this way and this way. Because speed is so neurological. The CNS is so important that I, I really believe that, that you've got to get the right things done. That's speed. Somebody asked me once if this was a scientific principle. No, it's some, somebody just thought it up 300 years ago. But I do believe this is true. There's a lot of 80, 20 things I like to say. I, I tell my coaches all the time, we're not going to spend 80% of our time working with the 20% of our kids. They ain't worth a shit. That's mean, you know, but, but it doesn't mean we don't care about those kids. But if you're not careful as a sprint coach or a football coach, you will work so hard with the kids that can't do things right that you're neglecting the kids that win games. So I think it's something you need to think about. Uh, if this is true, then most of our efforts are wasted. So this goes along with the whole essentialism idea. Priority does not mean 12 priorities. Priority is singular. That's why we're, we're saying that speed is the priority. This is way too many words for a slide, but it, it's an important thing. Um, this is from essentialism. I do believe the way of the coach is to go big on everything, to try to do it all, to have it all, to fit it all in, to outwork the competition, all that stuff. And then we operate on the false logic that the more he strives, the more you'll achieve because the hard workers always win, champions are the people who outwork, all that stuff. And we've all come from that background. Even if we're enlightened to realize that the people who train smarter, they're the ones that win. Even if we're enlightened, we still come from that hard work type of background. Uh, that's what we grew up with. I need to get out of that. Nido omo wa ido mu ezu. Anybody know Japanese? I mean, the, the man that chases two hares catches none. So, once again, if you're trying to do too much, like the thing that I always think about as a sprint coach, if I'm trying to get my kids in shape and trying to get them fast, I'll very likely catch no hair. Uh, I told our football coach the other day uh, that he tries to catch 100 hairs. I mean, he chases everything. And what he needs to learn is how to go big on certain things. Now, what things to go big on, that, that's, that's tough. You got to think about that. The way of an essentialist. 
Instead of trying to accomplish it all and all at once and flaring out, the essentialist starts small and celebrates progress. Instead of going for the big flashy wins that don't really matter, the essentialist per pursues small and simple wins in areas that are essential. Now, once again, you have to decide what's essential. What's important in your life? Basically, I've given up everything except for my family, my job, and drinking. That, that's pretty much, you know, I mean, that's, that's, that's what I do. Um, uh, and too many people are like going in a hundred directions. And they're not very good at any of them. But seriously, you know, it's, you know coaching is important to me. My chemistry room is important. Talking about small wins. I believe that speed grows like a tree. And that's why you cannot have all these phases or periodization things where I'm going to work on this, this period. You know, I'm not going to lift for three months and then do mileage for three months. And then, no, it's speed all the time. Speed and rest, speed and rest, speed and rest. Because your gains are going to be so small. And you have to be patient with this. You know, like, if you have a tree, you don't see it grow unless you like take a picture of it and take a picture of it the next year then you see growth that's what i find with my sprinters is that by continually working at speed we're able to grow like a tree but you have to be patient and you have to keep doing it so all my things uh this is really speed reserve this is what eric quorum talked about about raising the ceiling that Obviously, nobody can run 100 miles an hour. You know, fast guys run 25, 26, but it's a metaphor, okay? It's like train at 100 so the 80 is a breeze. I saw it in Ken Clark over the lunch break, and he said that there's no question that if Usain Bolt would have run the 400, not trained for the 400, but run the 400, he could have run sub 43. No question. Now, it would have hurt, but, but he could have. I mean, it's ridiculous how little we do with Marcellus, but yet he ran 48-41. He only ran the 400 three times this year. 48-41. When you're fast, if your car can go 100, it's pretty damn good at going 80. And a lot of people don't realize that. Everybody was feed the cats. They are always saying like, okay, you feed the cats, but how, what do you do with your 400 guys? It's like, what? Nothing. They're the same as my sprinters, exactly the same. I bet you're not very good in the, hell, if we would have run Marcel's in the four by four, we're state champs. Cause he would have split 47. And then I had a 50.4, a 50.4 and a 50.9. And they never took a lap in practice and never ran more than 200 meters and only had nine lactate workouts in 18 weeks. So I'm absolutely convinced that you do not have to do anything special. There is no speed. I don't say the word endurance. I, you know, endurance is not in my vocabulary. It's all just speed, speed, speed. Never run a lap in practice, period. We don't ever jog. Um, Eric Corum said, you know, talked a little bit about conditioning and stuff last night. Uh, and... And, you know, endurance and things like that. But when he, you know, I said, oh, gee, I don't know if I like this guy. And, 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 but then he said, what he listed as what they did looked, looked, looked like my X Factor workouts. Where we do stuff and then, and then you do something else like 12 seconds later. And then you do something else. And for 45 or 50 minutes, I guess your heart rate's up. I don't care. To me, that doesn't feel like endurance work. Some people call that aerobic. I call that a lactic. Does your heart rate stay up? Of course it does. So when I talk about uh, aerobic, what I'm thinking more like is like a three mile run, continuous stadium stairs, things that are steady and long. And so we never ever do anything like that, ever. Anybody that's ever exposed to feed the cats, They'll say, your kids will say stuff like this. We never sprinted last year. And then you say, well, what the hell did you do? Well, we just ran. I like to make a distinction between running and sprinting. And football coaches don't make that distinction very well. Matter of fact, all field sports 
they, they think that sprinting is just fast running. I believe sprinting is something totally unique and must be treated as so. This is one of my quotes. Uh, sprint as fast as possible, as often as possible, staying as fresh as possible. If you violate, well, you can't violate the first thing or the third thing. Because if you're, if you're not running max speed, then you're not sprinting. If you're not staying as fresh as possible, then you can't sprint. Those are absolutes. Now, as often as possible, I agree with that, but I also think it's pretty cool to take a week off once in a while. Uh, I, I really like the idea of three weeks on, one week off in training. Uh, usually, uh, like, like in our winter training, we'll go three weeks in December, and then we have two weeks off. Most coaches be like, ah, oh, these are going to lose everything. No, they don't. That two weeks is great for the kids. Great. Great.